بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah the Almighty tells us as a part of his blessings to the human kind he says the Almighty have we not made for him a pair of eyes and a tongue and a pair of lips it is one of the blessings of Allah Azza wa Jal that we have this tongue this organ and a lot of us don't realize nor appreciate this great blessing that can be transformed into a menace if not used properly with this tongue a man is transformed from blasphemy and disbelief into Islam and also to the opposite direction a lot of the Muslims don't pay attention to it the Prophet warns us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that a man or a woman may say a word without paying any attention to it cause him to fall in hellfire more than 70 years without reaching the bottom of it 70 years in hellfire and yet he did not reach the bottom of it why is that because of word he uttered he said without paying any attention to that the Prophet Sallallahu told us in a very nice and beautiful hadith that gives us a glad tiding he tells us that whoever preserves what's between his jaws and his legs I will guarantee paradise for him or her which indicates that if you protect and preserve your tongue from saying things that may not please Allah and if you preserve and protect your private parts from sin the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will guarantee that you enter paradise and enter Jannah and in another hadith Abu Musa al-Ash'ari may Allah be pleased with him asked the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam who is the best among the Muslims and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it is he who the Muslims are safe from his hand and from his tongue in the sense that a person who does not harm others with his acts he does not beat them he's, he does not kill them he does not drop them he does not do anything bad to them and he does not say anything bad that harms them he does not slander he does not swear he does not backbite he does not say lies then he is among the best of Muslims and this organ this tongue that we have could also cause us to enter hellfire and the hadith of Mu'adh Ibn Jabal may Allah be pleased with him the Prophet told him sallallahu alayhi wasallam so many good deeds you should do this you should do that if you can't you should do this you should do that but at the end of the day he tells him that if you can't do any of these good deeds the least you could do is hold your tongue from saying something that is harmful so Mu'adh may Allah be pleased with him said O Prophet of Allah are we accountable for what we say because some people think that talking is okay and where I come from they have a an Arabic saying that says that talking has no customs or taxes on it you can talk as much as you want nobody's gonna charge you for this and this is wrong the Prophet وسلم, corrected Mu'ad by saying oh Mu'ad what makes people fall on their faces in hellfire except the things that they say with their tongues so it is something that is dangerous if not utilized and used in the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal.
people say that you can talk as much as you want nobody is gonna charge you for this and this is wrong Allah the Almighty tells us in the Holy Quran not a word does he utter but there is a guard by him ready to note it and this is in Surah Qaf not a single word Abu Bakr may Allah be pleased with him he used to say that this tongue of mine is the organ that took me to bad places this is what I'm going to be punished for with or because of the tongue Umar ibn al-Khattab the second caliph may Allah be pleased with him said that whoever talks a lot will make a lot of mistakes and whoever makes a lot of mistakes will eventually make a lot of sins and whoever makes a lot of sins then eventually he will go to hell a lot of the scholars from the past used to advise themselves and the others not to talk a lot they would prefer being silent than talking because they knew that the more you talk the more mistakes you tend to make Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyab was one of them he used to say that nothing is harder than holding or preventing yourself from talking not even Hajj not even Jihad not even anticipating and guarding the Muslims all of these things are easy nothing is harder than preventing yourself from talking and he says if you woke up in the morning with this burden on your back you're afraid of talking then you would not be at ease but usually people wake up and go to bed without paying any attention to the things that come out of their mouths Sufyan may Allah have mercy with him said that the longer you're silent this is the key for proper worship because if you talk a lot you cannot worship Allah properly you would most likely think of the things you said and the things that you've heard while worshiping Allah Azza wa Jal. and when you hear these stories and quotes one would think that okay these guys were unable to talk they didn't have the ability to speak and that is why they preferred to stay silent and this is wrong they were the masters in language in rhetoric they were the masters in knowledge of Islam from the Quran the Sunnah the Hadith and the Fiqh and so on if they wished they could have easily dominated the places they were sitting at and dominated the talk among their companions but they returned to their Lord Allah the Almighty Umar Ibn Abdul Aziz may Allah have mercy on him one of the great scholars one of the great worshippers and one of the great rulers of Islam who happened to be as some people call him the fifth Caliph of Islam he says that the only reason that I do not talk a lot is that I'm afraid of showing off and boasting myself he has the power and the command over the language to talk beautifully but he is afraid of being or of showing off therefore this organ this tongue what comes out of your mouth is real and potential danger Abdullah ibn Mas'ud the companion of the Prophet ﷺ, tells us that nothing on earth is in great need of incarcerating or being incarcerated more than this tongue you can put criminals in jail you can put wild animals in their caves or in their cages but the most thing on this planet that needs to be incarcerated is your tongue you have to observe you have to preserve you have to prevent it from doing something from talking from uttering something that displeases Allah and so many things that we do 
falls under this category. And Tawus, one of the scholars of Islam, says that my tongue is a lion. If I set it free, it will eat me. That is why they always preferred to stay out and to be silent and not to talk in something that may incriminate them, may put them in the way of harm. We have a short break. Stay tuned and inshallah we will be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our gatherings nowadays extend to hours and hours. And as Zuhri, may Allah have mercy on him, says that if the gathering is prolonged, then Satan has a great portion of it. And this is logical. Look at our gatherings. When we sit with our friends and loved ones for hours and hours, maybe the first half an hour would be greetings and checking out things. Second hour would be about normal things. But if it goes on, if it's prolonged for more than that, then we talk about everything. We talk about politics, real estate, we talk about money, we talk about chit-chatting, backbiting, mocking from people, joking, giving jokes and mockery of people that we know. And all of this, though it may bring some joy to us, it may make us laugh for a while, yet every single word that came out of our mouths will be written on the Day of Judgment and we will be questioned about it by Allah the Almighty. A lot of the Muslim gatherings nowadays are filled with backbiting, with detecting the shortcomings of Muslims, with classifying them into groups and considering this to be permissible backbiting, permissible ghiba. You find people sitting and trying to classify people. They say, this man has so and so. The other one, he's labeled to follow the XYZ group. This, this group does this and that. Those are hypocrites. These are so and so. And at the end of the day, only remaining person is me. It was said once that there were two men, Muslims, talking about the Muslim community the Muslim world as a whole, and condemning it, saying that all the countries are corrupt, with the exception of our region. And in our region, all the countries are corrupt, with the exception of our country. In our country, all the provinces are corrupt, except our province. And in our province, the whole province is corrupt, except our city. In our city, you and I know that it's corrupt with the exception of the street where our houses are in. And in this street, only two houses are saved from being corrupt, and that is your house and my house. And I've noticed that your prayer is not that good. So this leaves only me in the whole earth. This is the case with most of the Muslims nowadays. They sit in their gatherings, they discredit this and discredit that, they label this group and they label this jama'ah and this organization, and at the end of the day, it is only I who fits the criteria to be saved on the Day of Judgment. And on the contrary, it is only I who will go to hell. If I have this attitude, if I look down at Muslims, if I think that I'm better than them, this tongue of mine, these words that come out of my mouth will put me straight into hell. May Allah Azza wa Jal save us from this. Al-Fudayl ibn Ayyad, may Allah have mercy on him, says, By Allah, it is not lawful for you to harm a dog. It is not lawful for you to harm a pig. How dare you harm a Muslim brother by talking about him? Ibn Taymiyyah, he says beautiful words. He says, 
it's astonishing how easy it is for some to stay away and refrain from haram transactions such as riba, such as bribery, such as taking people's money. It's astonishing how easy it is to refrain from fornication, from drinking intoxicants, from looking and sending your gaze on forbidden things. Yet, it's astonishing how difficult it is to prevent your tongue from moving in things that Allah Azza wa does not allow. We all who are pointed at as the role model in worshipping Allah, in knowledge, in being pious and full of virtue, yet if you sit with them and you listen to them, you will find every single word coming from their mouths, from their mouths, are in things that do not please Allah Azza wa Jal. They backbite this man, they slander this man, they say things that put them as far as the east and west in hell. And subhanAllah, how many people who prevent themselves from eating haram food, yet they eat the flesh of their own brothers in Islam. And to say that silence is better than talking is also not correct because silence is better than talking if you're going to talk in something that is harmful, in something that does not please Allah Azza wa Jal. But if you're talking something that pleases Allah, then this is much better. Iyas ibn Muawiyah, one of the scholars of Islam, was asked once and the people next to him complained to him saying that yes you talk a lot so he immediately told them do I talk in some in things that are good or in things that are bad they said no you talk in things that are good then he said as long as you do a lot of good this is good so if you're talking if you're preaching if you're giving advice if you're guiding people and this requires that you talk for 24 hours, this is A-OK. -okay. This is excellent and perfect. But if you talk in things that are not useful, this is where silence comes in handy. Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, says, Oh my tongue, say things that are good and you'll be prosperous. Or stop saying things that are bad and you'll be safe. And nobody pays any attention to this. Therefore, silence is not intended for itself, but it depends on the quality of the things that come out of your mouth. If you are advising people, guiding people, teaching people good things, this is far greater than gatherings of backbiting, of chit-chatting, of talking about actors and actresses, about sportsmen, about sports in general, about mocking of committed and practicing Muslims, definitely. And you cannot compare the circles of teaching the Qur'an and teaching proper knowledge to the gatherings of dancing and listening to music. You cannot compare those who use and utilize their ability to write those who write beautiful articles that call people to Islam those who defend Islam those who teach Muslims about their life and about Islam to those who would love to spread desire and lust among the Muslims who encourage them to mix men and women to do things that displease Allah Azza wa Jal and bring the wrath of Allah among the Muslims. And that is why Allah the Almighty tells us in the Holy Quran, is then the man who believes no better than the man who is defiantly disobedient, they are not equal. SubhanAllah. A believing person, can he be equal to a person who is disobedient? They cannot be equal by Allah. Therefore, those who teach others and call them to Islam 
are far greater than those who teach others devious things and call them for sin. And definitely those who see sin and do not talk are worse than those who ask people to refrain from sin. The best among Muslims are those who ask people to refrain from sin. Yet those who do not talk when they see sin are far better than those who enforce and ask people to commit sin. Now, what is our role? Our role is to utilize the abilities and the blessings we have and to use them in the sight of Allah, in what pleases Allah. Our role is to monitor everything that comes out from our mouths and to monitor everything that others say in our presence. So if you see or you hear someone backbiting or mocking of Islam or Muslims, you have to stop them. If they do not stop, you have to leave their gathering. You have to watch and monitor what your children say, what your wife says, in order for you to be a proper Muslim. Because if you do not preserve your tongue, as the Prophet said, والسلام, paradise cannot be guaranteed for you. And if you utilize what comes out of your mouth to be at the side of Allah Azza wa Jal in what pleases Allah the Almighty, then you are among the elite and you will be with the prophets of Allah, with the honest, with the martyrs and with the people of virtue because this is the result of what comes of your mouth. And you have to make the choice whether you choose paradise or you choose hell. It all depends on what comes out of your mouth. This is all the time we have for today's program. So until we meet next time, fi amanillah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.